Today, we're going to be talking about Social Security Survivor Benefit. I hope you enjoy. So the last couple of videos that we put out have been focused on spousal benefits and ex-spouse benefits. Today, we're going to change gears and we're going to move into survivor benefits. Again, it's an area where there's a lot of confusion. And it's easy to confuse because they're similar but not the same. So if you recall the last couple of videos when we were talking about spousal benefits and the ex-spouse benefit, we're always talking about potentially drawing up to 50% of the worker's primary insurance amount. And now, as we shift over to survivor benefit, we're talking about a different dollar amount. So in order to be a survivor, of course, you have to have been married to the worker. The worker's passed away. You had to have been married at least nine months then the worker has to have passed away. And as long as you're old enough, which again, as a survivor, that changes a little bit. So for survivor benefits, you have to be 60 or older. With any other retirement benefit related to Social Security, you have to be 62 or older. Now, if you're a survivor and you start drawing at your full retirement age, then what you would end up doing is you would take over the worker's check. So it's not a percentage of the worker's check. You actually take over the deceased worker's check. So if the worker was drawing $2,000 a month and you qualify as a survivor and you're full retirement age, then you draw $2,000 a month. If, on the other hand, you're 60, so let's say the worker was drawing $2,000 a month, they passed away, you're age 60, and you go in and you file for that survivor benefit, you're going to get 28.5% reduction. So they're going to reduce your benefit by 28.5%. So about uh, in that particular scenario, we were just talking about on a $2,000 a month, it'd be what, about $570. So you'd only draw about $1,430 versus the $2,000. And this is an important piece to understand because we didn't have time in the other videos, but the deeming rule, if you are a spouse or, uh, or a worker, there's a rule out there with Social Security, it's called the deeming rule. And the deeming rule creates different rules for what people can do claiming-wise based on their year of birth. And that goes, again, it's a little deep for these quick videos that we're doing here. But just know this, if you're a survivor, the deeming rule does not apply. What does that mean? Well, it means if you have your own work history and you're also eligible for a survivor benefit, well, it's important to know what sequence that you should draw because the deeming rule says once you file for benefits, if you're under the deeming rule, you, you're deemed to have filed for everything available, so you can't pick and choose. On the other hand, if you're a survivor, no matter what your year of birth was, you always have the option to pick and choose which benefit you want to draw when. So, quick example. Let's say that your survivor benefit you were going to draw was going to be larger than your own work history benefit, no matter what you did. Well, in that scenario, if you were going to claim a benefit early, you would want to claim your own work history benefit at 62. And then when you got full retirement age, you would shift over to the survivor benefit. And I can't tell you the number of people I've seen that were not given proper feedback on that. And then they miss out on tens of thousands of dollars that they just leave on the table. On the other hand, if your own work history with delayed credits and all, ultimately is going to be the larger of the two benefits, well, then you would prefer to start the survivor benefit at whatever point, potentially as early as 60 or 62 or whatever. You would draw that benefit till age 70. And then at age 70, after you've got all the delayed credits that you could on your own work history, then you would shift over and you would start, you would drop that benefit and shift over onto your own work history. So, when you potentially have a survivor benefit, 
then there are options on the table. And it's imperative that you know all of the ins and outs of the different impacts of claiming one first claim versus the other. How's it going to impact your other assets? How do all these pieces coordinate together? And when you do that and you put those pieces together, what you end up with is you end up with a stream of income or multiple streams of income that ultimately will end up lasting longer than they would have otherwise. So if you have questions about this related to Social Security, anything really related to Social Security retirement benefits or retirement income planning, don't hesitate to give me a call here at Westside Advisors and Insurance Services. I hope you have a great week. Thank you.